Sometimes you might want to put the green and red turtle shells away and play a racing game that's a bit more serious on Nintendo Switch. Today, AK Roming is going to talk about Gear Club Unlimited 2, a Nintendo Switch exclusive that recently hit the eShop. But is it worth it? Let's find out. <laughs> Prior to playing GCU2, I was once again intrigued, albeit only mildly, since developer Eden Games proudly announced that the game is a Switch exclusive. However, despite the team focusing only on the Switch this time around, this is yet another lackluster mobile-like experience rather than a fully-fledged console racer. My experience with Gear Club Unlimited 2 was rough straight out of the gate due to the starting vehicle, a Mini Cooper. In many racing games, you regularly start with a simple car that's a light on horsepower before gradually working your way up to better vehicles. This formula is also present here in Gear Club Unlimited 2, but the starting vehicles are very frustrating to drive due to their poor handling. The beginning of anything should always be engaging, so as not to turn people away. Still, I pushed onward to see if it would get any better. After several hours, it did improve, but that payoff was short-lived. After gaining enough funds, I bought a Nissan 370Z, an iconic streetcar. Like in other games, it's actually pretty fun to drive here. So what happened? Well, the upgrade system happened. As you progress through different tours, you'll eventually hit a level cap determined by the performance level of your car. If your car is too weak or too overpowered, it won't qualify for the race. So I upgraded the 370Z only for the steering to become far too twitchy. The handling issues were reminiscent of my experience with the Mini Cooper. Cornering was in fluid, and my brakes felt weak. This made no sense. Upgrades are meant to improve a car, after all. I wondered if the problem was really the game or just my driving, so I tried out the test drive feature, which is available to all cars in the showroom. I decided to take the Bugatti Veyron out for a spin, since it's one of the highest performance cars in the entire world. Sure enough, here in GCU 2 it's also a speeding bullet, but surprisingly, it also handled relatively well. So it seems that Gear Cup Unlimited 2 just has some grossly unbalanced driving mechanics. Cars like the Veyron cost millions of in-game dollars and take several hours to unlock. Just to test it out, I tried out other high-performance cars too, and the same thing happened. They're incredibly fast, but still very maneuverable. This doesn't make any sense because GCU2 is a racing game. I should be compelled to race by having fun, not just because I want to access actually drivable cars such as these. The shoddy mechanics wasn't just affecting me either. On many occasions, I even observed the AI opponents ramming into corners, indicating an issue with the core game itself. Gear Club Unlimited 2 continues to fall short in basically every other area as well. Presentation is quite lackluster. Despite occasionally decent lighting, this mainly looks like an upgraded Wii game rather than a 2018 Switch title. Even older racing titles like Grid look miles better. Despite the simple visuals, the frame rate still somehow manages to dip below 30 FPS in many areas. Thankfully though, it is relatively stable when actually racing. Vehicle models look okay, but that illusion to once you move up close. They're not exactly the most highly detailed models out there. There's also no cockpit view despite the interiors actually being models. But what really disappointed me was the environments. They all look incredibly bland due to the static backgrounds, and you never interact with anything on the track like puddles or mud. There isn't even a whole lot of jumps. Each race takes place in a small section of a large map, so the same environmental themes are constantly reused. That is, canyon, snowy mountains, forest, and coast. In fact, during my first tour, I kept switching between the canyon and snowy mountains so often that it almost felt like I was playing the same races over and over again. The game boasts having over 250 races, but none of the tracks are actually memorable. They all just feel incredibly repetitive and generic. Loading times are also quite egregious due to the fact that the game seems to load this huge map every single time. But then again, proper open world racing games like Forza Horizon 4 and The Crew 2 load way faster, so this could just be due to poor optimization. Speaking of which, there are loading screens in just about every area of the game. My last main complaint is that the economy system just seems so warped. 
you have to pay for everything, which seems to indicate that the microtransaction nature of the original Gear Club is still very present here in Gear Club Unlimited 2's DNA, despite the fact that there are no actual microtransactions in the game. In order to upgrade your car, you not only have to upgrade different parts of your car, but even the workshops where these upgrades are hosted. So you're constantly having to pay money, which means you're constantly having to participate in the generic races, which overall creates a very frustrating experience. All in all, Gear Club Unlimited 2 just feels like one big missed opportunity. Eden Games decided to take a second chance, but this might as well have been a content update for the original Gear Club Unlimited since virtually no real improvements have been made. And the most egregious thing is that this is a $60 title, which is vastly outclassed by similarly priced games like Forza Horizon 4. This is in no way of the same level of quality, so it should by no means even be remotely the same price. I'd be hard pressed to spend $50 dollars on this let alone a whopping 60. On that note, I highly recommend just taking a detour and waiting for other racers like V-Rally 4, which will be hitting the Switch very soon. And next year, in 2019, Grid Autosport will also be coming to the system. With that being the case, this is not the same situation that the original Gear Club Unlimited found itself in. It's no longer the one and only. Now that there's actual competition on Switch, I'm hoping that should Eden Games decide to go a third time at this idea, hopefully, that time around, they will actually improve the formula because there is something good here. But for now, it's just a subpar experience.